All right, uh, we do have quorum now. I'm seeing uh, nine of 11 of the TSC. So um, Dan, if you'd like, we can go ahead and get started. Yeah. Thanks to everybody for joining. Once again, all are welcome here at the uh, Hyperledger Technical Steering and elsewhere within Hyperledger. Um, I think I will I'll let you, Todd, just go ahead and, and run down the, the agenda here. I don't have anything additional to add. Sure, sounds good. Uh, so diving in with the first topic, quick reminder, event reminders, uh, next Hackfest is in about three weeks now in Montreal just after Member Summit. So please get registered for that. I think we've got around 100 already. So really fantastic numbers there. And I know Tracy and Rai are both working with the technical community on um, agenda planning for that. So if there are things you want to hear about, hack on, uh, topics you want raised or things um, you want to present on, please get that dropped in there and we'll get that um, massaged into shape for, for the Hackfest. Uh, the APAC Hackfest will be the week of March 4th. We're working on the details for that, but please hold that in your calendars for now. And the last one, um, we'll continue to remind everyone, Hyperledger Global Forum, December 12th to 15th in Basel, Switzerland. This is our flagship event for the entire Hyperledger ecosystem. So technical tracks, business tracks, uh, tons of networking, workshops, uh, et cetera. So definitely make the trip out for that. And with that, I will hand it over, I believe, to Tracy or Rai uh, to talk a bit on Hyperledger Community Health. Yeah, so um, I guess last week we started the, the conversation about the changes that we made to the, the charter. We uh, didn't really have a whole lot of time to, to talk, so I think this is really uh, opening up the discussion to see what else um, people might want to uh, comment on. I think the, the last meeting we were talking about uh, whether metrics actually did make sense uh, versus not. So, uh, you know, obviously the, the group was thinking that maybe metrics only made sense uh, in order to help develop kind of um, best practices and, and move towards community growth. But then um, it seemed like last week maybe we were taking a step back from that. So uh, yeah, I think this is really just open discussion. Let's, let's hear some more thoughts and uh, see what else we wanna do about this particular proposal. So I, I think it's important to have something. Um, you know, I, I, probably a working group makes, uh, makes sense. Um, might not have to be a meet every week kind of thing or, but um, you know, I think we've seen a couple projects where, okay, uh, you know, Fun um, staffing is going away from some companies. Um, so, what do we want to do to keep the project going? Or, you know, there's been lots of conversation about how do we encourage more people to join specific projects or working groups that may need help. So, I think it's important that there be some mechanism to, to deal with that. The exact implementation, you know, we, we can figure out. But a working group seems to make sense to me. Thanks, Mark. Uh, I know something that's important to me is uh, making sure that, that we do look into not just the uh, sort of the, the aggregate population, like or, or are, we, are we able to help drive contributors, but also are we, are we doing that in a way that's, that's reaching all the potential contributors? And so that's uh, why I think it's important to have diversity listed on there specifically. So I've, I've added that. I know that there was some thoughts initially that let's not get too prescriptive in, in what we'll work on, but I do think it's important to have that on there specifically. Yeah, I think that's uh, a good call out, Dan. To that end, um, I've also reached out to my human resources department. And so you'll see a, a name down at the, the bottom of the list from interested parties. Uh, and that's, that's somebody uh, from Intel with, uh, with PhD in, in uh, looking at how diversity recruitment impacts uh, organizational growth. And I'm wondering if that's something that uh, 
I would guess maybe the, the larger companies have these kind of resources that they could draw upon, but certainly uh, smaller companies, I would guess, also have people within them that, that have these kind of skills. And I think one way to look at this is we see a technical area that, that needs development and we're able to recruit in uh, developer resources. We, we see technical documentation needs. We, we recruit in technical writers. This seems like a place where we can be recruiting in people with human resource talents to make sure that uh, we are developing a healthy community. So I'd ask that, that uh, for the participating companies here, the member companies and, and those that aren't member companies, if you think you've got some expertise within your company for this, this might be a, a different way to contribute than, than your company's been contributing so far. Yeah, I mean, and that sounds like a great idea, Dan. And, and diversity is a hard issue, right? I mean, that's, that's something that's not easy to solve. I mean, I'd be happy if this working group helped with like easier issues, like when do I schedule my phone calls for, for maximum participation? Yeah, definitely. There's all sorts of aspects here, whether it's geographic diversity or uh, there, there's just many ways that we can define this. There's a lot of there's a lot of low hanging fruit, and uh, you know, and I, I think th there's a you know just there's a lot of stuff that this could potentially work on, um, and I, I just I, th I think there's a lot of there's a lot of hesitancy about kind of prescription, and I think if we make it so that this the the interaction with the group is more that you ask the group. Like if I'm a project or a working group or something, I add, I come to the group and the group gives me a recommendation rather than the group unilaterally issuing recommendations, which I assume is what the the plan is. And I, I think that that seems, you know, I, I don't think that seems extremely controversial. Right. And I think also when it comes to things like um, contributor metrics, that something that this body might be able to do that an individual project can't is look across all of those project reports. So again, not to be overly prescriptive here, but, but just as an example, it seems that um, this group could aggregate across those statistics and be able to see trends that aren't apparent from an individual project or working group. So, <clears throat> yeah, I don't disagree with that, Dan, but I, I I'm, you know, I, I definitely think that there's more that we can do, you know, sort of to, to, to drive additional contribution and participation. Um, I'm actually, frankly, this is an open source initiative. And so I'm more concerned about getting people to work on open source than getting HR involved necessarily. Um, and, <clears throat> You know, I, I think at the, at, you know, while it's true that, you know, we could get a group that looks across them, but again, that's kind of our job here, right? And, you know, we get these quarterly reports, we see them back to back. It's going to be pretty obvious when you see diversity in one project that is at, you know, whatever threshold, and then the next one comes in and it's like homogenous, right? That's, it, it'll be pretty obvious, I think, to most of us. Um, and, you know, maybe if there's a specific, you know, thing that we need to drill down on and, and try and solve, we should, you know, we, we could maybe convene, but I, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm reluctant to start yet another working group that doesn't really have a specific deliverable, right? That's, the, you know, this is sort of hand wavy in terms of what it's going to deliver. Now, if the focus is on, okay, let's come up with a means of, you know, using the chaos tooling to generate some numbers that can be maintained by the LF um, uh, and shared with the project so that they can incorporate those into their reporting, okay, right? But that's a deliverable, right? That's, that's a thing that they do, they deliver, 
and then we could you know think about does it have some other deliverable then but i'm i'm kind of i, I th otherwise i just see this as sort of wishy-washy let's do healthy things that's that's the problem that i see yeah thanks for that chris and, and i also think that there's a risk that we create too many working groups that are increasingly um, divorced from actually generating code. Yeah. Uh, and what's, uh, what's different to me about this one is that it's, and I'm not married to the idea that it's necessarily a working group, but that we are looking at something that is, uh, you know, it's underlying how we, how we actually mm -hmm. feed the code generation. Mm -hmm. So the other thing I heard you say is, is more specific deliverables. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing that I look at when, when I look at, at these proposals is, is, will there be something concretely delivered? So as we look at these these work products, does it jump out to anybody something more specific in any of the existing bullets or any additional bullets that would help make these more concrete? I think that's what was <clears throat> intended by the suggestion of having um, a you know kind of a review of the um, updates and review of you know whatever community metrics that the tooling gives to kind of provide extra supportive kind of here you might want to think about this or grow this in a certain way, which I think was received as um, usurping the role of the TSC and performing its oversight role on, on the different projects. But I think was meant much more in the spirit of you know each time they run this the scan they can provide this community health report and and then as a as a working group put together some pros which you know uses that data to say you might want to think about this or think about that right um so that was like i think one one idea for an outcome was this kind of advice but it got perceived as 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 uh taking something away from the tsc which i think was unfortunate yeah and i i think you know a lot of that too comes out of some of what we're hearing in the project updates right um we seem to have a lot of requests for help coming out of those those project updates and i think that was part of our thinking as well right is like okay now maybe here's something specific that we can focus on uh to help the the larger community when uh there are specific requests coming in um and, and maybe this is a working group that could do that so brian you're exactly right um that's kind of what we were thinking um so yeah um excuse me um I like Dan's idea that it's more of a task force uh, that uh, will provide actual tools to the working group so that they can run these uh, metrics themselves, working groups and projects, not just working groups. Um, and then, uh, then come out with those numbers. Uh, and in fact, the, the work, uh, the, uh, community um, promotion task force would um, have a set of tools that anybody can use and uh, the working groups and push towards the working groups and the projects these tools so that they can see for themselves. Um, and it's kind of interesting that the TSC is talking about this. Have you ever taken a look at the mirror yourselves? Uh, so, you know, this is, this is a very uh, interesting problem because obviously the ones who are, um, uh, you know, involved and standing for elections and get elected uh, seem to be, uh, you know, people from a particular um, gender and a particular, uh, you know, direction. So th there is... Uh, it, it is it is a reflection of our community, the DSC itself. So uh, we can talk about it all we want, but uh, in the end, this is a reflection of uh, you know what we got through the electoral process. Maybe there is a way to uh, make a little more transparent to the electoral process itself by saying, okay, this is the number of 
this is a percentage of people who voted for this TSC, you know, uh, like out of 600, how many people actually voted? We don't, we don't even know that. Uh, and if it's so, can we increase uh, the voter percentage and diversity? Uh, uh, and how can we do those kind of things? So this is, you know, it's, it's a far uh, 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 reaching thing and it's very wide and it, ha it has to be an effort, not just by a working uh, a, a task force or a, or a working group. But Vipin, I think you have a good point, but we have to start somewhere, right? So, I, we, you know, if we try too much, we, we I, I'm not against. Enough. I'm not against it. I'm just suggesting that it would be uh, better that if you do it as a task force kind of thing, that helps the working groups in uh, increasing their diversity and uh, community. community. So I also wanted to add, uh, you know, to this question of whether it should be a working group or not. I, I don't think we should get too much into the details here. I, at the end of the day, I don't think it matters so much. A working group doesn't have to be there forever. I think the revised charter is an improvement over the previous version because it better positions how this fits with what we have as the quarterly reports. What I'm not exactly clear on though is whether the working group members intend to actually kind of insert themselves, and I don't mean that in a negative way, but kind of get into the different projects to have a, a, an experience of what's going on there and make some assessment so they can make some recommendation? Or is it really just, you know, generic uh, methodology and metrics that you know, you end up developing and then you say, okay, these are the tools that people should use to make their assessments and make it part of their quarterly report. Well, I, I do think uh, uh, the healthy and the diversity is um, important for every project and uh, working group. Um, however, I think it's already part of the team, co-chairing uh, co team, and also the maintainer team job. And also it's a uh, kind of duplicate with uh, the TSC job. Um, and my, my one concern is that the, the term um, healthy is kind of too gener generic. So that means we, it may be difficult to define exactly the working scope and the responsibility for the new working group. But that's the that's part of the charter is to define what that means. Yeah, the chart or gave the definition. However, you know, um, for the term of health, health, uh, project health, uh, different people have different understanding, and uh, you can see everything is related to the health, like uh, the meeting quality, code quality, or, or even activities, right? Yeah, I mean, I think that's a good point, Bawa. And I think most of the stuff we're talking about here is, is less health and more like, how do we improve our community? So yeah. would people be more comfortable if we called this the Hyperledger Community Improvement Working Group and, and kind of focused on that angle? Because that seems like most of, the, most of what the goal of this group is to do anyway, is to, to help the community improve rather than, uh, rather than measure the health. Does that make sense? Do, is that reasonable? I think, Chris, there's, there's a separate conversation going on in the chat channel. Chris, did you want to propose something as well? Yep, if I can find the mute button. Um, yeah, so I said, so, so for purposes of the, <clears throat> you know, the, the actual gonculation of the, the metrics, you know, figuring out how many committers we have and what their diversity is and, and so forth. Uh, the, you know, in the, in the proposal, uh, you know, Tracy cited the chaos project, which is a sister um, um, collaborative project in the Linux foundation. And they're working on various tooling. Um, I looked at it a while back and it didn't seem quite ready for prime time. I'm sure it's in the six or nine months since I last looked at it, it's probably come a long way, but, you know, we could do like a, 
a project or a you know a hyperlater labs um, uh, to to actually just work on adapting that work and and making any changes and so forth that are relevant to our own needs so that the teams do have the ability to run those kinds of numbers in a consistent way that you know we're comparing apples and apples um, but that would be a specific project with a specific set of deliverables and hopefully it would actually bring additional people into the community that are writing code and and you know that's at the end of the day that's what we're trying to do here so that that's, that's one thing that I, and, and again i think you know a lot of the kinds of discussion that are you know that would be had in a working group would um you know manifest themselves in the context of that project and um uh, you know, and again, you know, as, as, as I've said before, I think, again, I think in large part it's the TSC's job to focus on some of these things and we should be having more conversations about this sort of uh, amongst ourselves. And, and I, I think that the quarterly reviews have, have had a, a positive effect of bringing the TSC together to have those kinds of discussions um, in the context of a particular project's um, you know, concerns or needs or, you know, and any concerns that we may have with what's going on with the project. So, um, I, don't, I don't know, that, that's, that was just one way of, of certainly moving forward without just sort of having endless debate about this. I think that's interesting to look at a subset of what you might be able to do with scripting to pull out stats. I think what that wouldn't necessarily address is uh, the other, the, well, really most of the diversity aspects. And I think what maybe could be clearer in the proposal here is before you can fix something, you, you need to know you if to it's a problem. It. Yeah, you gotta be right. able to measure it. So I think there's a task here to, to figure out how we define the problem. And particularly in the case of diversity, that's where I'm thinking as a software developer, that's not what my skill is. Uh, I don't know the the responsible way to collect information, and there's there's laws about that, uh, and and a lot of other sensitivities. So I think it'd be worthwhile to have a task force that might include people with human resource skill sets. They could help us identify if we have a problem and make suggestions about how we would remedy it if we do have a problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, it sounds like we may have rounded out a uh, comment for today. Uh, and I know we've got a number of other agenda topics. Uh, so by all means, we can keep that conversation going on uh, on the mail list uh, or chat. Uh, so so just to um, maybe close this out, uh, as uh, what I heard was that um, from the, the, the chat channel, we're going to create a lab. Um, Vipin is going to be a sponsor, and we're also considering not kind of withdrawing this as a working group, but making it more of a task force that's focused on particular items that come out of discussions from the TSC. Is that right? That sounds fair to me. Sounds good to me. All right. Thanks, guys. All right, great. Um, so moving forward in the agenda, next is the quarterly project updates. So uh, we have Explorer uh, this week. Hi, uh, this is Parda from DTCC. I'll um, give you an update on the Hyperledger Explorer. Okay. So when, when the project was started, the goal of the pro, let me make sure that you guys can hear me. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, when the project was started, you know, the goal was to obviously create an explorer that can work across multiple platforms. Um, and initially we did start with uh, implement support for Fabric. Okay. Um, as uh, Fabric evolved and uh, the explorer project evolved, um, it, was, uh, it became quite specific for Fabric. So in the last quarter, we focused on re-architecting the project to make it a little bit more modular so that if somebody wants to add uh, additional uh, uh, additional support for new platforms, uh, they can um, they can easily do so. Okay, so 
that was uh, there was the bulk of the work that went on in the last um, last one quarter and also we were um, revamping the ui making it a little bit more um, uh, giving it a little uh, professional look so that um, you know people whoever is using the explorer they can use it right out of the box and probably take it to um, uh, take it to production we heard actually from several users who are using explorer um, you know there were uh, several feature requests uh, that are seeming more and more like enterprise related features so uh, and we didn't have um, the time to actually work on those enterprise features we did open the tickets in jira and uh, put them in the backlog uh, but but we haven't had the time because because we were uh, focused on keeping up the explorer with the latest fabric releases um, now we do uh, see contributions from community. Uh, we've been seeing uh, lately a little bit more than previously. Previously, it was all just DTCC. Um, now we do see contributions from others, but not to the level that where we can add other maintainers. So, so DTCC is still actively maintaining this project, uh, and um, and we are we are seeing you know healthy activity in the Rocket Chat channel. And we are monitoring it regularly to make sure that you know the questions are answered. And we keep asking folks whether uh, they are interested in um, contributing to the Explorer on the channel on the Rocket Chat channels. So, so overall, I think the the project itself is in a usable state. It is we see we see people folks using it, um, and um, at the and at this point, it's it's really about you know how much functionality can it have. And also keeping up with um, with up with the newer releases of the platforms, especially Fabric. We had discussions probably once or twice with the folks who were doing the sawtooth, right? But those didn't really go anywhere um, in terms of trying to integrating uh, the Explorer that was developed for this, for sawtooth into Hyperledger Explorer project. That's all the update I have. Do you guys have any questions? Thanks, Parda. Uh, this is Dan. Um, I think I recall for some earlier conversations, there, there might be some interest from, uh, from your wing of developers to be looking at new problems that are outside the context of, of Explorer. Uh, is, that, uh, is my recollection correct on that? Yes, yeah. So we, I mean, because the Explorer right now is, um, it is usable project. We started looking into um, into the fabric earlier. We were actively involved in fabric for SDK and chain code. Um, so we are trying to get back to some uh, level of expertise so that we can start contributing to the fabric. But um, other than that, you know, that is still that is still um, right now a work in progress is, is that what your question is did i yeah and as i'm thinking through this okay. i'm also remember there's some interest in in looking at interoperability problems so okay um i guess the the guidance that i'm i'm meandering towards here is thinking about well do you think about doubling down on explorer and making it really successful across the frameworks or think about uh, doing something completely orthogonal and taking taking the talent that you've assembled around this and starting to look at some of those interoperability problems if of course those were actually what was starting to take more interest so I think interoperability is an extremely hard problem we are trying to define exactly what that what is our interest um, in interoperability is we haven't had time to define the problem itself, right? If I know exactly what problem I'm trying to solve, it becomes easier. The current project that uh, Quilt is focused only on the, the payments, right? It's it's really about the cryptocurrency movement kind of between two different uh, ledgers. Um, I I am not sure if you know we don't have that use case right now for DTCC, so. Um, um, so we haven't uh, given um, given um, a lot of thought into 
how we want to solve this interoperability problem. Okay. Yeah, and I and I don't okay. it was kind of off the cuff here, so I don't expect you to have some some concrete ideas, but I I do think it's worthwhile to do a little thought pathfinding uh, to think about where some of those interoperability problems are uh, or opportunities. So just uh, one or two other things off the cuff here. The there's there might be things that underlie all of the platforms that there's some commonality and we can have some more common libraries. And I think the the work that's already in progress with the crypto lib is a good example of that. And then you could also look uh, top down instead, where maybe Explore is already an example of something where you'd be looking uh, potentially for for a tool that could call into any of the stacks. And then the the third area is something that's more explicitly uh, integration related that's probably represented by by quilt but uh, as you say wouldn't be uh, specifically for for the the financial transactions yeah, so that yeah. I mean go ahead Chris no I was just going to add that we um, we have uh, we're working on the interoperability paper from the architecture working group and you're working on a bunch of primitives uh, that would uh, enhance or uh, would be necessary to do certain types of interoperability and DVP being one of them and I urge you to at least uh, listen in and contribute because DTCC uh, you know obviously would be very interested in this topic and uh, it's not uh, confined to cryptocurrency or to currency movements, since the D part can be delivery of various kinds of assets, most of them uh, uh, that you custody. So you should be able to provide some uh, very, uh, you know, astute comments uh, from a use case perspective on this particular topic. Okay. I think one of our um, architecture guys, I think they probably are attending the, the working group discussions. Let me check with them to see uh, if they have any feedback that they can provide you guys. Plus, I mean, the interoperability discussion that you guys are having is going to be interest for us um, as well. And, and I'll second what Vipin said, that, that having concrete um, data points about what works and what doesn't work, what you found to be the challenges would be extremely helpful. Okay. Uh, last time in the quarter report, I remember it is suggested that uh, the Explorer to provide the official Docker image at Docker Hub. How is that going? So the Docker images, they are, they are available. I just don't know whether they are posted to the posted officially, but the, that work is complete. Okay, so it's already at the Doc Hub. People can pull down the image from it. Uh, the images are getting pushed pushed to the Hub, but but the the work in terms of Dockerizing the Explorer that is that is done. I'll double check the pushing images part. Okay, thanks. And I'll let you guys know. Yep. Any other questions? Sounds like not. Okay. Thanks so much for okay. putting together your report and, and also for getting that in on time for us to uh, review before the meeting. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Dan. Mm -hmm. Looks like identity is up next. Yes, Dan, um, let me post the link on Rocket Chat and so, the working group uh, meets regularly, of course. Uh, we have a core group and a uh, revolving group of attendees. We have at least uh, two or three uh, 
new people every session. Um, this, um, there, there was a slight slowdown we noticed due to, um, I believe it's due to summer vacations. Um, the most important thing that uh, to note here is that um, we have uh, progressed quite a bit on the paper and uh, new trends have been contributions and comments uh, even when the conference is, uh, we are not in conference or the week of the conference. So there is steady, steady um, update of the paper with uh, respect to comments and with respect to actual contributions. Uh, and I think we are, uh, we can almost smell uh, the completion of the, of the paper at this point. Um, and as with uh, many others who have said, uh, we need identity experts from, uh, and uh, people who have actually implemented stuff from the various DLTs to contribute. Um, we have a solution for this problem now, which is by having uh, prepared a bunch of questions, we are going to either directly or indirectly uh, interview uh, the, uh, the experts in these um, projects so that they don't have to show up and actually modify the paper because uh, previously we noted that uh, nobody came even though they all said they are interested in contributing so we're going to push them a little bit uh, with the active uh, interlocution and asking questions um, which are very going to be very pointed and direct. And um, identity working group is one of those groups uh, that are foundational and hence attract a large uh, variety of people from various uh, technical and non-technical backgrounds and a wide variety of uh, companies. Um, last quarter, uh, last quarter we uh, presented, uh, uh, we had Kali present on the domains of identity paper and um, we used that as a through line in stitching the uh, various uh, things that we describe in the paper together. And uh, we also get regular reports from uh, people who are in the identity field uh, and are attending the numerous conferences that go on. Last week, we had a presentation from IBAN people who um, w w did present here at the TSC, and we felt it was an identity-related problem, so they presented their uh, their vision and then also they got back some feedback from people in the legal community uh, from Europe who were on the call. So it was kind of interesting that this has become a forum for uh, these kind of discussions as well. And um, the IBANP project will be applying uh, for a lab state status as well. Uh, we want to finish the paper very soon. Uh, hopefully, there will be a rough draft either before uh, Montreal or shortly thereafter. Of course, we will be uh, asking for help to polish this up with the tech writer. Uh, in terms of diversity, we do have a healthy and vibrant community. Um, but, you know, we, we try to do some rough measurements of gender diversity of participation in the calls. I can say it is in the range of 20, uh, 20% or so, and which, although not ideal, um, you know, we need to uh, boost that by making it, uh, making uh, welcoming, um, new participants and encouraging them, uh, especially in that area, to stay around and contribute. Um, and as you saw that we have several leaders in this, uh, in the identity movement, 
uh, and also in the projects who are uh, women. And uh, they are able uh, leaders and we welcome their uh, contributions. Uh, in terms of uh, geographic uh, diversity, we have quite a bit of participation from Asia, Europe, uh, and hopefully, uh, not hopefully, but sometimes it's used as a proxy for, uh, for uh, um, you know, other kinds of uh, diversity. Uh, we do have um, a lack of participation from Africa, I think uh, there were a couple of gentlemen from South Africa, but uh, also Latin America. So we would uh, encourage uh, the people who are actually creating the identity solutions in the DLTs to show up uh, because there is a unique uh, perspective from the user angle to be had from participation in the identity working group. And with that, that's uh, uh, any questions, comments? Yeah, Vipin, good job. Um, have you thought of maybe doing something at the Hackfest in Montreal, where, you know, either like a separate session where you could pull all the developers who, for each DLT together, or maybe do some interviews there? Ben, if you're talking, you're muted. Uh, am I? I mean, you cannot hear me? I can hear okay. you now. Now you can hear you. Yeah, I was saying that um, that I, once we have the questionnaire, which actually is, you know, not, a, not even a questionnaire, so to say, uh, it will be more of a guide to a conversation uh, uh, for an interview. So I might conduct some, some of those interviews uh, with uh, people from the different DLTs, if they are present in Montreal, and add that to the, uh, you know, to the paper myself. So that's that's the plan. Thanks, uh, Mark, for that suggestion. Hey, Vivian, thanks for uh, spending some time uh, talking about and keeping diversity prominent, and how you're thinking about your working group. Um, switching to the deliverable aspect uh so your your main deliverable is is the paper and you're kind of marching down towards the the end of the the road it sounds like on that what do you think that the community will get out of that paper uh the community will get uh something like a a complete uh a survey of the different identity activities uh, specifically targeted uh, at, the, uh, at the problems and at the DLT uh, in general. And of course, they will also get a window into how we are solving some of those problems in the DLTs that are incubated or uh, uh, in under the Hyperledger hothouse. Uh, that is the aim of the paper at, the, at this moment. But uh, as you recall, there is a implementation aspect uh, which we had in the charter, but I, ha I had to um, uh, delay that because otherwise our uh, deliverable uh, in the short term would be quite broad. So I fo we fo chose to focus on part one, which is basically uh, more of uh, a survey and also certain uh, solutions, and uh, you know that, that that's that's the idea. Okay, great. And then, so I assume that you've got strong participation from Indy as one of, if not the main, identity-focused projects here. Yeah, this is one of the, uh, I mean, we do have uh, um, participation from Indy, but sometimes it drops off because they are uh, very busy uh, either pushing code or uh, attending uh, conferences. Uh, so it, it waxes and wanes depending on the uh, 
on what's happening in the wider identity world. But this is another thing that I actually forgot to mention that uh, the most of the people who come to the identity working group are very focused on SSI on that end of the spectrum. Uh, but we need some balance as Tan uh, Lieberman suggest suggested that uh, we have to uh, represent the enterprise folks because that is the focus of the, you know, a lot of the hyperledger uh, DLTs. So um, we would, uh, you know, we are trying to create that bridge uh, between the two uh, balances uh, between uh, the uh, SSI world and the, um, and the legacy world or the enterprise world. Uh, so many people did raise that as one of the uh, one of the things that they want to work on. So we have a couple of volunteers who are uh, actually actively looking at that. All right, I know of one thing that might fit in that realm. There's a there's an application being built in the Sawtooth framework called Sawtooth Next Directory, and there's some contributors from T-Mobile among others and they might help bring that enterprise view that you're looking for. And so you'd probably be able to find them in the, I think it's the Sawtooth Next Directory channel on chat, where if you uh, just look around the repo, you'll see the committers in there as well. Are they going to be present in Montreal? I don't know. Okay. Because that would be a, uh interesting thing to talk about uh, mm -hmm. since I'm, I'm planning to be there. Great. <clears throat> Hi, this is Vikas. Uh, I'm, I'm from CLS Bank. Uh, we are building an application uh, using the Hyperledger Fabric uh, and it's a critical application from our side and we wanted to know if we can also have some enterprise presence uh, in this forum. As you know, because this is a completely open uh, forum for in the working group, uh, both the channels of the mailing lists and the calls are completely open. And of course, you can also contribute directly to the paper. Um, so any suggestions, any comments, uh, you can take to those uh, venues. And I can, we can also connect. Sure. We have had an important bond conference, so we can connect. You're breaking up because I can't, I can hardly hear you. Sorry. Speaking from Sorry to interrupt, but your audio isn't coming through. I'll, I'll encourage you to connect uh, with, with Vipin on, on uh, chat.hyperledger.org. That might be a good way to connect. Uh, if anybody else has some uh, questions or feedback on this update, uh, we've got uh, we've got a 10 minutes left in the meeting. We also want to have a little bit of discussion about the uh, the overall report process here uh, and then I think we'll probably won't have time for the bug bounty discussion but if anybody has some further comments let's let's get those now otherwise we can switch into the next topic okay thank you Vipin you're welcome Dan okay um, so I don't know if we've got a whole lot of time for discussion. Maybe we don't need much, but I want to make sure that, that we are getting out of these updates what we, what we originally intended. Um, we might be able to get a little deeper discussion on some of these topics if we're able to do what uh, both on, on the TSC side and on the reporter side uh, if we do a couple of things. One is Bawa just role modeled something that I thought was great that looking back at the previous reports, uh, our issues being addressed, um, our new issues being raised. So that, that's something that we can be doing uh, in our own responsibility as, as committee members here. Uh, 
the other thing that was coming to mind is are we uh, you know are we spending time reading through the status reports I, I don't think that's was the case for today's discussions but we'll be able to get deeper into the material if these reports are provided at the beginning of the week and that gives us all a chance to actually review them so that we can come to this meeting with some informed questions Does anybody else on the on the committee have some feedback for for the project and working group update formats, the, the way that we're going about discussing these in these meetings? Well, let me ask you then, do you think there's a problem? I had gotten some feedback that you know, in some cases, we're we're spending maybe more time going through what's what's written in the report than than having allocated that same time to maybe digging into what the issues were that were raised or topics that weren't covered by the report that could be delved into. Yeah, I mean, I think that makes sense, Dan. Um, if we want to, like, it's not hard to read the reports beforehand. If we just want to have less of a, a presentation and more of a, a question session, that might be good for everybody. And I guess maybe one of the other, thanks Hart, and maybe one of the other minor problems, I don't think there's anything critical here, but one of the other minor problems is we have had um, reports that have been delayed at some times for weeks. And so there's a, a timeliness to the reporting that's, you know, first of all, get it in on, on the week that it's due as well as get it in, in advance so that we can have a meaningful discussion. I, I think that uh, it's a good point. And uh, to encourage people to read the questions, I guess, uh, maybe from the TSC side, we may uh, provide some like a positive help or support to uh, help resolve those issues. Yeah, that's a great point. And from the new working group slash, uh, uh, you know, people who are going to help us with the community uh, development. I think I only got the second half of that. I heard and from the new community working group yeah, the new uh, uh, working group or oh, whatever you want. Help from, uh, help from yes. the crew. Yeah, okay, I follow. Yeah, I think, I think it's a good idea to shorten the presentations. Um, you know, I know when I've done them in the past, I've, I'm not reading it verbatim, but, you know, I'm going through. Um, you know, I don't know if it makes sense to move the reports to more bullet items versus you know, a, a, a text or, or document, um, or just, you know, maybe there's both. There's, you know, a written out text, and then as a, as you know, the chair is something I come up with, okay, here's this, you know, three bullet points I wanna make sure I get across during, during the call too. Yeah, and I'm not so concerned with restricting the time as much as making sure that we make the best use of the time. I'm all for doing homework ahead of time. <laughs> so I see that we've got uh, Quilt and the performance working group on the docket for next week. So probably the goal for both of those projects would be to get the, the updates in sometime Monday, and then that will give everybody a chance to review them before Thursday. You know, one, one thing I'll, I'll add is the Apache Software Foundation, uh, their board has monthly calls where they review about 30 project reports each time because they have like 350 different projects. Um, and so um, they check their agenda into version control, um, kind of like the wiki, um, like we do, I guess. And then they, um, 
before the meeting, they the board members know that it's their job to review those reports, and if they when they when they review them and they approve them by putting a little plus one in checking that as a vote, essentially, or as a uh, confirmation that they've read it and understand and accept it as a report into version control. And then when they actually do get on a phone call and talk, they only talk about the exceptional cases or the ones where there's really an issue that needs kind of raising. Um, which is what you have to do at that scale, I guess. But uh, um, it's a it's an efficiency that would be kind of interesting to see here. That sounds like a great idea if we can implement it. We can implement the voting on a blockchain. I know Indy has plans to do voting then on its platform. <laughs> Okay, well, uh, if there's no other comments there, I think that uh, discussion has run its course. So it uh, looks like for next week, in addition to those report outs, we will at least have uh, some discussion to be had on the bug bounty. So if you're not caught up on that from the mail list, please take some time to do that over the coming week. And then uh, probably something else that we could have some discussion on next week is uh, a little bit more uh, planning on what we'll actually be doing face-to-face -face in uh, Montreal. All right, well, uh, I think that probably concludes things here. So thanks for everybody's participation here, and we will talk again next week. All right, thanks, everyone. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Cheers. Have a nice day.